Outdoors Del Marva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva, it's a deer hunter special. We have the latest action from the start of the Maryland rifle season. Then a look back on the early whitetail seasons from bow and muzzle loader to successful shotgun hunts. And special features including a venison recipe you'll want to try for yourself. Plus we'll draw a winner for our latest product giveaway and big bucks abound. We'll share more of the best viewer photos so far. It's a deer hunter special right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Hi everybody, thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva, the Deer Hunter Special. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker. And Willie, we couldn't be more excited about this week's show because, well, we've really hit our stride. The peak of deer season right now, and talking about those major gun seasons, either still happening right now or just wrapping up. And so far, it's been everything we've come to expect. It sure has. And to start things off this week, we're headed out and about for the opening week of the Maryland rifle season. One week in, and we've seen some really nice deer taken up and down the eastern shore. Did really good day opening day. I uh, got a 10-pointer harvest, a uh, 10-pointer to bring it to the best butcher I know. I have a friend of mine. He uh, he has property right here in uh, on the Maryland side, and uh, he asked. He said, "Is anybody here would like to go down and hunt?" And I told him I'd like to go down and hunt. And opening morning, I managed to harvest this 10-pointer right off the property. This whole deer will be eaten. We'll have it with chili, tacos. Uh, hamburgers, spaghetti, everything under the sun, and uh, even the church where I attend, uh, they usually give away about 1,400 pounds of uh, deer burger a year uh, to help feed the homeless. I've been hunting now for about 20 some years, and I've got a few deer on the wall, and uh, this is probably one of the uh, prettiest deer I've ever been blessed with. We went right here, and we went Yeah, 168 pounds. He weighed 168 pounds. That's a pretty deer there. Yeah. Yesterday, shoot, I seen 10 of them. Seen seven does and two bucks. But there was two far shot. I took one shot, but missed it. These were all shot this morning. Right. Good luck to you there, uh, Major Matt. Got your hands, your hands full on you there, bud. There's probably been at least, what, 50 so far? There'll probably be another 20 tonight, I'd say. We enjoyed a lot, we enjoyed going, and I had a wonderful time here on Del Mar this morning. Is that handy enough? Those hunters still have some time left, and we can't wait to show you more sights and sounds as the Maryland rifle season continues. Mike, over to you. Thank you, Willie. We know long before any of us even think about picking up a rifle or a shotgun, there's another group of die-hard hunters that are already out in the woods. Well before the rut, those early archery hunters battle ticks and chiggers as they spend time in their summer tree stands. And earlier this year, I spent a morning with one hunter in Sussex County. In the early archery season, many hunters prefer the early morning hours for a couple reasons. One, you can sneak into the woods before the deer start to move, and two, it's still cool enough to be comfortable. In my case, about 20 feet up a tree. All right, it's about quarter to six. We're on a farm outside of Dagsboro, Sussex County here for the early archery season in Delaware. And just down below me is my hunting partner for the day, Jimmy Colborn. I haven't hunted this farm before, but we're all set up with plenty of time. A friend of mine came down and hunted it this week, a little bit earlier than I could. And uh, in three days, he saw about 42 deer three nice shooter bucks and we're out today hoping to, hoping to catch a glimpse of one of these bucks. Before long, sections of forest start to become more visible and it's beginning to get light enough for me to put away my infrared camera in exchange for my high definition gear. And it appears to be just in time. Jimmy perks up as we both hear a rustling of underbrush about 40 yards to our left. 
But as quickly as a deer hunter's heart begins to race, a trio of clumsy critters sends our expectations back down to earth. It's kind of odd seeing them raccoons early in the morning and a family of three of them walking along and the next thing you know, I heard a bunch of rack and here comes three long beards. Of all, of all things, it's, you know, every time, sometimes I go, I see turkeys, but just the whole flock of just nothing but long beards was pretty cool. And as we settle back into our stands and continue to wait, there's still no replacement for time in the woods. One thing in, with bow hunting is a lot different than gun. Uh, you got to be prepared and you got to practice, practice, practice. Despite a calm wind and the presence of other wildlife here, the morning ends without spotting a single deer, let alone a racked buck. We're calling it a day. And as we climb down from our stands, we'll have to rack it up to time in the woods, the type you truly can't simulate any other way. It's quiet, it's kind of like becoming one with the environment, you know, you see things that you can't see, you know, at any other place. So maybe not exactly what we were hoping for when we set out that day, but there's nothing wrong with a morning like that. Still ahead on Outdoors Delmarva, the Deer Hunter Special, we're headed to Delaware for a look back at the shotgun season opener. And later, shooting deer takes on a completely different meaning. This animal obsession through a photographer's lens. But first, did you know the white-tailed deer is found naturally in 45 of the 50 United States, which five states have little to no white-tail population? The answer when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina, Shooter's Choice, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. The five U.S. states with little to no white-tailed deer population are Nevada, Utah, California, Alaska, and Hawaii. Thanks for watching the Outdoors Del Marva Deer Hunter Special. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. From the early fall archery seasons through the late winter seasons, deer hunting opportunities in Delaware span a five-month period. But despite that, most of the deer are still harvested during the two-week shotgun season. When opening day arrived a few weeks back, our cameras caught plenty of success stories. Well, who's we gonna get us a deer? Gonna give it all we got anyway. this annually right before our shotgun season. We've been doing it for probably 35 years, getting bigger every year. Oh, hunting is, is, is terrific and getting game is great, but it's the fellowship probably better than any of it. They're all good hunters, they know what they're doing. Yes, we are. <laughs> they, um, they've got a few big ones on the wall, so they know what they're doing. Uh, we got in there this morning and uh, I don't know about 6.30 or something like that uh, a couple of does came out on one side of the field and buck came out on the other and came across there and I shot him. I think I was probably hunting you know hunting a matter of maybe 30 40 minutes and then all of a sudden the big one appeared just they moved around in front of me and uh, shot. I shot the big one first. Probably by Saturday night, we'll have close to 300 hanging in here. They'll keep us hopping. I took him at seven o'clock and it was over for the day. So it ended quick, but it was a nice morning. Still a good morning to be in the woods. Good luck, fellas. 
To all the successful shotgun hunters, we want to say congratulations. Now rest up, you're going to need that energy for next year. And we were also side by side with hunters during the early Maryland muzzleloader season, including one trip to Wicomico County, a memorable trip for me where finding the deer wasn't an issue. It was the first time I'd met, let alone hunted alongside Ricky Hammond, but I could tell pretty quick he was a good guy to know. Yeah, we're coming back to a couple permanent stands uh, on a good location where we've had a, a food plots and we've got a, a lot of deer coming in out of here, so. Fact is, we weren't here on this farm near Willard's for either one of us, really. Ricky was the guide. Let's, let's roll. And I was doing the camera work as we set out to find a quality deer for our fellow hunter, <laughs> Randy Beers. And to reiterate, finding the deer wasn't the issue. As we pulled up to our stand, we have to practically chase a group of does away. Gotcha, because here, finding actually means choosing the best deer and then taking the best possible shot. I like to have something over 100 pounds. Pre prefer with big horns, but I'll take a big doe. Randy himself is a longtime hunter, but it's his first time with a black powder rifle. This 50 caliber Savage is pretty user friendly, and between its mounted scope, some binoculars, and a high powered spotting scope inside the stand, we should have no trouble identifying deer from any distance or direction, including the first deer to emerge from the woods in front of us. Among them, a small spike buck. We're just milling around, just eating a little bit of grass, and I guess there's corn there too. Like there's not a care in the world. And within the first hour, we've already counted 11 different deer. And the decision is made to single out the biggest doe left, now standing dead ahead in the field. And it's a sure thing. As we follow the path through some thick underbrush and briars, we don't have to go far to locate this mature doe just 30 yards in. I didn't think it was too far back. Good job, buddy. Yep, thank you, thank Good you. Job. And all in all for Randy, not a bad experience for a first-time black powder hunter. Still ahead on our Outdoors Del Marva Deer Hunter Special, we'll join Mike by the grill. Don't miss the venison recipe you'll want to try for yourself. Plus, we'll pick a winner for our latest product giveaway. We'll be right back. Hi everybody and thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker and we have a great segment lined up for you right now where I can smell the grill already. I'm here at the Corridory Center at the East Coast Garden Center in Millsboro, Delaware. And joining me right now is Philip Masterpolito, head chef over at Fish On in nearby Lewis, Delaware. Great restaurant, Philip. I'm glad you could join us. And Thanks, what we're here right now is because, well, we are in the middle of deer season. A lot of guys out there and gals have already been successful. So what do you have for us today? Uh, we have a beautiful leg cut of uh, venison, so I'm hoping today that we can just give everybody a little bit of uh, some easy tips on how to make their dinner more enjoyable. Okay. Um, for starters, uh, we took our, our, leg, our leg cut and just quickly marinated it in uh, red vinegar, uh, blended olive oil, and dried Italian herbs. It's in the marinade for about 20 minutes. You don't want to over marinate it as to not damage the meat with the, uh, the heavy vinegar. All right, and up here, this is a couple of spices and or just sauces. A little, just a little bit of salt. And then we're also going to have a little bit of a twist on everything at the end and just lightly brush it with a, um, a smoky barbecue sauce. Mm, sounds great. Absolutely. All right, so the grill's fired up, ready to put this steak on. Yes, sir. Uh, so we're just going to very carefully just throw this on a nice hot grill. And you want to hear that sizzle and see a little bit of the flames going on. That way it's going to get a nice sear and a nice char on the steak and also it's going to lend to not letting it stick as you can see right there. Well you can already smell just that searing happening and Absolutely. those herbs just really taking off. I mean it's going to, looks like it's going to be delicious. Do you want to keep this open or closed when you're grilling the steak? Um, that's really your comfort level. I, I prefer to have it closed to get a nice uh, harder sear on the bottom of the steak and just let it, just let it grill. Um, we're going to go to about a, a medium okay. so we'll probably close it and let it, uh, just let it cook for just a few minutes. 
Right here we have a very basic potato salad. Uh, it's just steamed red potatoes, baby green beans, shaved celery, uh, mayonnaise and mustard, and a little bit of salt. And then we're gonna garnish it with some grilled yellow onions. These have been lightly tossed after they were grilled in uh, balsamic vinegar and extra virgin mm. olive oil. We've been on the grill for about four minutes now. And you can see we've got oh, a, a man, very nice, that. very nice crust. Look at look at that right there. That's that's beautiful. So we're just gonna give it a, a nice flip. And then now we're just gonna hit this side with just a little bit of salt. So we'll close the lid just for a couple more minutes and um, be almost there. Well, that smells delicious. That smells great. I, uh, the smell of barbecue sauce and the and the venison and the marinade, it's it's starting to fill the air and I'm getting excited. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take our steak off the grill. Let it go right onto the cutting board. And very important to let let any meat that you cook rest for at least a couple of minutes. And <laughs> that's the hardest part. That for is me. the hardest part because it smells so good. You I just want to dig right into this. That looks like the best venison steak I've ever seen. It's a little big and awkward just to, to dump right on top. So we'll just give it a quick cut in half. Right on top. Very nice. And I'm a I'm a I'm a grilled onion kind of guy, so <laughs> I'm gonna load it up. Philip, this looks absolutely amazing. I want to say thank you to Philip Master Polito, the head chef at Fish On in Lewis. Thank you. And if you want the recipe for this grilled venison and yellow onions over green bean potato salad, just go to outdoorsdelmarva.com. I think for right now, though, there's plenty here for the both of us, right? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you to the Cordry Center here at East Coast Garden Center for hosting us, and we'll be right back. But first, did you know? While they have a very keen sense of smell, white-tailed deer are believed to be completely colorblind. Did You Know is brought to you by Taws Marine Insurance. Everybody and thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva, our Deer Hunters special. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dykes. You know, when it comes to hunting, it's not just about shooting a deer. As most sportsmen will tell you, that's just a very small part of the experience. Yeah, but on the other hand, Willie, when it comes to photography, it is all about getting that one perfect shot. Kevin Fleming shares his own whitetail encounters in this edition of Wild Del Marva. Okay, it's autumn here on the Delmarva Peninsula, but that means it's white-tailed deer season again. But one of the things I can do with my camera that most hunters can't do is I can shoot the same deer again and again and again. This buck is probably pretty nervous this time of year. I was able to catch him in, in fall, early fall, with the colors changing in, in the grasses there, and they tend to stay pretty much out of sight. This is at one of our refuges, and the doe is standing motionless as I was coming by. This is actually shot from my vehicle. I caught the deer, the deer looked at me, and uh, it made kind of a nice still life or a portrait. Some days are like that. This is one of my favorite deer photographs. It's at Gordon's Pond in Cape Henlopen State Park. It's a very shallow pond. The deer in the middle there, the fawn, was particularly frisky. And I was watching him, I kept my finger, my eye right on that deer, and my finger on the shutter half depressed, and I knew it was gonna take a jump. The minute it did, I got it. Thanks, Kevin. And remember, Kevin Fleming's new book, Wild Del Marva, is now on sale. To order your copy, go to wilddelmarva.com. A dollar from every book purchased will be donated to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. All right, and now somebody out there watching our show tonight is going to win themselves a copy of Kevin Fleming's latest book, Wild Del Marva, signed personally by Kevin himself. Willie, what do you say we spin this thing around and pick a winner? Hey, here we go, Mike. Mix them up good. One more. One more for good measure. All right. Digging deep in here. There we go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Amish babies, Willie. There you go. And we say congratulations to CM Kurtz from Pocomoke City, Maryland. Congratulations. You won yourself a book. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Del Marva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Del Marva, care of WVOC TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. Still ahead, we'll share some photos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. Outdoors Del Marva viewer photos are brought to you by Branchy's Gun Shop.
Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina, Shooter's Choice, and Diamond State Pole Buildings. Welcome back to Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Captain Willie Dykes. And I'm Mike Parker, and this is our Deer Hunter Special. And now it's time to share some of the photos sent in by our own Outdoors Del Marva viewers. We begin with Matthew Jenkins of Laurel and his grandfather, Ronnie Cross. This duo sent in these shots of a couple of bucks they harvested during the Delaware shotgun season. 14-year-old Jacob Stevens shot this eight-point buck on his family farm in Worcester County. Jake says it weighed in at 180 pounds. Stacy Baker of Millsboro, Delaware, shot this nine-pointer on the second morning of the shotgun season. It wasn't her first brush with success. She tells us she also shot a six-pointer earlier this year. Ten-year-old Garrett Richardson is from Greenwood, Delaware, but shot his very first white-tailed deer during Maryland Youth Day. His grandfather, Zeke Richardson, says Garrett was smiling from ear to ear when he took this Dorchester County buck. Dale White from Willards, Maryland, sent in these shots of his two sons, 11-year-old Dylan and 9-year-old Cameron. Both took bucks on Maryland Youth Day. The boys were in different stands about 250 yards apart when Dylan shot the 8-pointer and Cameron the 7-pointer. 12-year-old Joey Pruitt of Pocomoke City shot this 12-pointer with a 23-inch spread during the Maryland Youth Hunt. Joey's parents, Tim and Kim Pruitt, say they couldn't be more proud. Derek Smith of Snow Hill shot this eight-pointer on Maryland Youth Day. Thanks to his grandfather, Dan Bradford, for sending in this picture. And we say congratulations to Catherine Christensen from Sussex County, Delaware. Catherine will have plenty of bragging rights thanks to this beauty of a seven-pointer. And Tommy McDonald of Seaford shot this nice buck with his bow during the early archery season in Delaware. He says it's a seven-pointer, but it has a broken G3 antler, so technically it's a six-pointer. Well, we love sharing your outdoor photos here on the show, so please keep them coming. You can upload them directly to OutdoorsDelmarva.com using Flickr, or just email me at mparker at wboc.com. Well, Mike, that's going to do it for our Deer Hunter special. It's a really special time of year, and we're happy to share it with all our fellow sportsmen and women. Yeah, we sure are. Definitely one of my favorite times of year. One of yours too, Willie, and there's definitely no lack of material here on Delmarva. I think we might have to make this an annual thing. You bet, Mike. Until next time, for Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Delmarva.